On today, whoops, on today's video, the Fujifilm Digital Teleconverter. Let's find out if it's worth using. Well, hi everyone and welcome to pal to tech Today we are talking about the digital teleconverter in the Fujifilm X-T5 and X-H2 cameras. This feature gives you what Fujifilm calls an ultra high resolution digital zoom. The setting is located in your menu under the camera icon right here. Now sometimes when we want to get closer to a subject, lens focal length may not be long enough. In that case, you're left with four options. Physically move your camera closer to your subject, or two, use an X-mount teleconverter, which attaches between the lens and the camera. Here's a Fujifilm two times converter, but at a cost of about $350, and it's an extra piece of gear. A main drawback also is that adding this two times teleconverter to this lens would result in the loss of two full stops of light. So that's not always ideal. The third option is to crop and zoom in in post-production software, right? The larger the sensor you have on your camera, for example, on the X-T5, you have 40 megapixels, the better your post-production zoom will be because you've started out already with more resolution and thus more pixels to work with. In the case of the Fujifilm X-T5, you can start with up to 7,728 by 5,152 pixels. But you've now got a fourth option, and that is the new digital teleconverter on your Fujifilm X-T5 or X-H2 camera. It gives you three choices, off, 1.4 times zoom, or two times zoom. Once you have it enabled, you'll see it in the top left area of the viewfinder or LCD screen. You can also assign the digital teleconverter to a custom button for faster access while you're shooting. It's real easy to do. Just press and hold down the DISP back button right here. Once you get into the menu, choose the button that you want to assign. I'll choose this button right here. Press menu OK to go into the options and look for digital teleconverter. Here it is. Once you assign it, you can use the custom button to toggle it between 1.4 2.0 or off. If you decide to use it, however, you're gonna have to follow a few rules. Rule number one, you cannot use it for shooting video, only stills. Secondly, it will not work if you have the camera set to sports finder mode. And lastly, you cannot use it if you are in any kind of continuous burst shooting mode where the camera is already gonna apply a 1.29 times crop. For example, these ones here. It's tempting, I know, to think of the digital converter feature as being a free way to add a longer focal length to your already existing lens. For example, I'm out shooting with this 55 to 200 millimeter lens and I've got it all the way out to 200 millimeters. But that bird, it's just so far away, right? I mean, I just want to get closer. So I use my digital teleconverter and I set it to two times. And now I'm shooting with a 400 millimeter focal length, right? 200 millimeters times two equals 400. Um, no, not exactly. And the reason for that is the word in the setting itself, digital. And that's because all the camera is doing is digitally zooming in and creating a JPEG file from that. And you will lose resolution and your images may be softer. Remember, you've got optical zoom and digital zoom. And the quality that you get with optical zoom is higher because that's only dependent upon the lens quality. With optical zoom, you are modifying the magnification at glass level, right? So therefore, you do not lose any resolution in how the camera can captures the image to the sensor. But with digital zoom, the camera first takes a photo at full size, and then using its onboard processor, it digitally zooms in, and then it saves that resulting output as a JPEG. And you also get a regular RAW file as well. Let me explain. If I set my camera to shoot both RAW and JPEG, and I enable the digital teleconverter to say two times zoom, then once the camera actually takes the shot, it saves two different files to the SD card. The first one is a JPEG file that is the two times zoom version that I had wanted. And the second one is a RAW file that is the same image, but without the digital teleconverter being applied at all. So you get the best of both options because you get a zoom ready JPEG, but you also have a RAW file as a backup in case one day you decide you don't want the zoom or you want to crop it to something else. Digging into this further, the camera sets some special 
special restrictions for the special zoom in JPEG file that it gives you. Let's use the X-T5 to explain this. Assuming that we're shooting with a three by two aspect ratio, a large JPEG gives you the full 7728 by 5152 resolution. A medium gives you 5472 by 3648, while a small reduces it down to 3888 by 2592. So when you set your digital teleconverter to two times and you've got your JPEG set to either large or medium, the resulting final JPEG image will actually be cropped down automatically to the small size. In other words, if you're shooting with the digital teleconverter and you ask for a large or medium JPEG, you're gonna get small no matter what. If you instead choose 1.4 times for the zoom, then this only affects large JPEGs, which the camera crops down to medium size. That's the price you pay for getting a JPEG straight out of camera that is already zoomed in for you. The idea here is that you don't need to do it in post-production. But, and I must say this again, but those of you Fujifilm users who were out there, just sit tight for the next minute or so. Anyone who works at Fujifilm Stop what you're doing and listen to what I'm about to tell you. You've got a usability issue with this digital teleconverter that I humbly request that you fix in the next firmware update. Here's the problem. If you decide for whatever reason that, okay, I'm just gonna shoot in raw and that's it. And then you go and you shoot something with the digital teleconverter. When you get back home and you look at your SD card, you will be missing that JPEG file. Basically the camera will not apply the digital teleconverter at all and it will just save out one full-sized RAW file. And the main problem with this is that there's no warning telling the user about it. So there's an easy fix. Have it so that if you set it to RAW only, then you automatically get a JPEG, right? With that RAW file. Or you get a helpful message telling you to set your image quality to JPEG or RAW plus JPEG first. So because of that, my best advice for anyone wanting to shoot with the digital teleconverter is to always shoot in JPEG plus RAW with image size set to large. Here's the question of the day. Since you are getting a RAW file every time you do this, can't you just crop and zoom in using Lightroom or Capture One instead of having to use the digital teleconverter? Wouldn't the quality be the same? Glad you asked, let's find out. In this first example, I use the 16 to 55 millimeter lens on an X-T5. I'm zoomed in as far as I can get with a 55 millimeter focal length. We are at F4 and zoomed in, here it is at 100%. And note the dimensions of the image are 7728 by 5152, the full range of the 40 megapixel X-T5 sensor. Now take a look at this image here. Again, shot at 55 millimeter focal length, but this time I use the two times digital teleconverter. In order to have a reasonably fair comparison, I am only gonna be comparing JPEGs. I'm not gonna compare a RAW and a JPEG, okay? So straight out of camera JPEGs only. So what I'm gonna do is take the first image that was shot with no digital teleconversion, and I'm gonna crop it with the same dimensions as the image that was shot with the digital teleconverter. So I'm gonna crop this image to 3888 by 2592 so that it exactly matches the digital teleconverter version that came out of the Fujifilm camera. In other words, this version right here. Let's compare them. So here you go. Image on the left was shot at 55 millimeters without the digital teleconverter. The image on the right had digital teleconverter two times crop applied. And at 100%, I am not seeing any difference. Let's go 200% now. And yes, the original image without the digital teleconverter definitely has more sharpness. Have a look at this area right here compared to this area right here. Let's try it now with the 50 to 140 millimeter lens. Here they are side by side. And this time I applied a 1.4 times crop. And as before on the image that didn't use the teleconverter, I cropped in using Lightroom to try and match the exact same dimensions as the JPEG that came out of the camera. And zooming in, I don't see any difference whatsoever. They look exactly the same to me. Same quality, same everything. But let's now try two times crop factor. Image on the left is the original crop in Lightroom to match the dimensions of the image on the right. Zooming in at 100%, I am not seeing much of a difference at all. These are pretty much identical. If I zoom in to 200%, now I can start to see a difference, but it's a pretty small difference. Just a little bit softer here, you see that? Frankly, I'd be surprised if you can see it on a small phone watching a YouTube video, but it's definitely there if you look at the letter X here versus here. Let me go in 300%. And let me go in 400%.
Of course, I'm pixel peeping at 400% here. So I think we can say, all things considered, that you do get slightly better quality cropping at 200% using post-production software like Lightroom or Capture One than you do using the in-camera digital teleconverter feature. But you really need to zoom in to see it. With 1.4 times though, there was no difference that I could see at all. But that's not the only factor here. Remember that just zooming in using the digital teleconverter in combination with a lower focal length lens, you know, like a wider angle, to try and match the same focal length as a longer lens is not the same. Your image, particularly portraits or anything where you want to have the subject isolated from the background, is going to look different. Let me show you. The first image here was shot with a lens focal length of 32 millimeters and no digital teleconversion was applied. The second one here was shot at a 16 millimeter focal length, but also using the two times digital teleconverter, meaning that the digital teleconverter should have doubled the focal length from 16 millimeters to 32 millimeters. And that would have matched the other image that was shot originally at 32 millimeters. 16 times two equals 32, right? But have a look at this. While the focal length appears to be the same, the background is completely different. And that's because when you have your lens set to 16 millimeters, you get a very different background and distortion than you do when you have it set to 32 millimeters. So with all this being said, what is the digital teleconverter good for? Well, first, it's great if you want a fast crop JPEG that's good enough to share or use where needing the higher resolution is not such a big deal, like social media. I think also a benefit here is that you get a cropped image that was processed to JPEG by the Fujifilm camera and not your editing software. If you want the absolute most drop-dead accurate official Fujifilm simulation look, then getting it processed by the camera itself is the great way to do it. You could, however, also use Fujifilm's raw processing software as well. And a final benefit is that you don't lose any light when you're zooming. If you're shooting with a zoom lens, many lenses will change their aperture depending upon how much you increase or decrease your focal length. Notice how as I'm zooming in, the lens maximum aperture lets in less light as you zoom closer. But with the digital teleconverter, you can zoom out, then set your lens aperture to let in more light, which can then allow you to use a lower ISO or a faster shutter speed. And then when you're done with that, zoom back in using the digital teleconverter and you won't suffer a light loss penalty. But in practice, I didn't notice that there was much more than a stop of light and I'd rather bump that ISO one stop in many situations than have a lower resolution JPEG file. But overall, it is an interesting feature to include in the camera and I found myself occasionally using it to quickly zoom in to check some detail in the frame that I may have missed, you know, seeing the scene from far away. So give it a try and see if you like it. And if you found a great use for it, feel free to share it in the comments down below as we can all learn from each other. Well, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will be signing off now, but have a wonderful weekend and I will see you in a new video next week. Take care.